Hello all, welcome to the October Nick Feed APE Collaborative. Uh, we've got an exciting uh, session today. We're gonna talk about adapted fitness uh, and all things related uh, to modifying so individuals with disabilities can successfully be included. We have two excellent speakers today. Uh, we are joined first uh, by Josh Porter, he was the Georgia APE Teacher of the Year last year in 2023-24. So he is going to be up first and talk about, um, you know, adapted weight training. And then next up is Kristen. And Kristen, I'm going to let you pronounce your last name because I only know you by your maiden name. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Um, Kristen Buenafe. Lena Fay. All right. So well, yeah. bad team. that works too. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so no, Kristen for a long time. Um, she did her uh, APE added authorization here at California State University Long Beach, and she has started a um, fitness center for individuals with disabilities. So she is going to chat about that. And she's an APE teacher locally here in Santa Ana. So without further ado, um, we are going to let Josh go ahead and share the screen and, um, oh, I guess one more thing about it. They'll each present for about 20 minutes. And then after that, we'll do about a 10 minute Q and a at the end. And I do apologize in advance for some reason, our Facebook live is not letting me go live. So we are recording it and we will put it on our social media platforms like YouTube, um, through Nick Bede, um, when we're done. So thank you all. So Josh, you've got the stage. Thank you. All right. Um, hello again. My name is Josh Porter. I am the, the adapted PE teacher at uh, Milton High School, uh, which is just north of Atlanta. Uh, and I also run a, uh, a big dog barbell, which is strength training for special needs. And uh, it's a special Olympics powerlifting team all in uh, all into one. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about getting, uh, kids with intellectual disabilities into the weight room. All right, let me go. Oh, hold on. I think I need to click share screen. Excuse me. Oh, good. And our live is connected. It told me it wasn't, but it is technology. Nice. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. All right. So one of the, the big reasons, and as, you know, as adapted PE teachers and PE teachers, we kind of know this, that uh, uh, there is a definitely a, a obesity problem in America, and that uh, really affects the students that we teach. Um, and I pulled this off Special Olympics Florida's website, where it talks about how that 74% uh, of Special Olympics athletes over the age of 20 are obese or overweight and 56 uh, percent have strength issues uh, to me I, I think that's something that I want to help take care of and and getting into the weight room for students with disabilities is just as important as it is for um, typical students to get into the weight room um, so uh, those numbers are pretty staggering and it's something that I feel like strength training would help um, so this is my why I have some really cool, awesome special Olympic powerlifters who are world champs and do some really awesome things. And I love what I do with them, but what I love doing every day is getting all of my students into the weight room. And this is why right here, this, uh, this is Adrian, uh, Adrian, I call him my hardest worker in the room. He looks forward to weight training every Tuesday and Thursday when his class gets to weight train. Um, he gets off the bus and he tells the paras and his teachers, hey, is today Tuesday and Thursday? They're like, yeah. He goes, we're weight training today. And that just makes me feel so awesome to know that he does that. Um, now, this video is a little older because um, you can tell we got our, our mask on, but uh, it's still one of my favorite videos. Nice. Nice. Relax, relax. And Great job. Nice. Look at TikTok. All right. So that's uh that's Adrian. Um Adrian, uh, he 
now he does not need the side spots. Um, I can just spot him. Um, he's obviously a student with CP. I do have to help his grip onto the bar. But nowadays, I'm the only one that spots on him, and he's pushing that bar up and down. Um, he also does curls with it um, and uh, lots of other things. And he and the fact that he feels and gets as excited as he does after he just does a bench press, it just makes me so happy. It makes him so happy. He feels like he's accomplishing stuff. Um, and that's why I do this. And um, <clears throat> uh, I was asked to be an adapted PE teacher during the 2015-16 school year going into the next school year. I'd just been a gen ed PE teacher. I um, And I said yes, because I had a background growing up. My mom was a, a PE teacher, but she also was a, a paraprofessional in a Severe and profound classroom. I grew up helping go to Special Olympics events, and I said yes. Um, during that next school year, one day I was trying to figure out something to do with them. I was learning how to be an adapted PE teacher kind of on the fly and on the spot. The weight room was open, and I said, hey, why can't my kids go into this weight room? And we did. We laid down on the bench and did some bench press with, you know, just the bar. I was helping. The kids loved to do curls. Like who doesn't love to go into the gym and do some curls every day or every other day. Um, and it just went from there. Um, and so now I have a weight training. Um, I have two weight training classes for my uh, adapted PE kids. I have uh, my seventh period classes at the end of the day has my much more experienced lifters that have been lifting with me for a few years now. Um, and then the other class uh, is a class of, or, of somewhat beginners or kids that are a little bit more intermediary. My two other classes, while we don't get into the weight room every day, two days a week, I bring the weight room to them. I bring bench presses out, barbells, PVC pipes, dumbbells, whatever we need. And uh, we do stations outside the weight room uh, with those two classes. So like uh, Adrian's class, is one of my classes, but it doesn't necessarily have access every day to the weight room, but he still is lifting every day with one of those bars. One of the biggest things that I always talk about when I'm presenting is the individualism and just know your kids um, and know who can lift and who can't lift, uh, what their limitations are. Um, you know, some examples, the Down syndrome with the spinal instability. Um, they can't put bars on their back um, just because it, it could so, and then you have your physical limitations with your joint mobility, um, and then kind of some of your sensory issues with your students with autism. Just kind of know your students. And my weight room doesn't look like a typical weight room. It's going to be different. You're going to see some different things in here. You're going to see Maddie. And again, Maddie's another girl. She loves to lift. She's another student with um, uh, some CP. Um, but she has full range of motion with her right hand. So we make sure we hit the full range of motion there. Josh, is that a PVC pipe? Uh, that one is a training bar. Um, so that's like a 15 pound bar. We actually had put 20 pounds on there. Maddie can do that whole bar all by herself with just her right hand. So she does shoulder presses now with just that bar um, and lots of reps. I try to get her lots of reps trying to help, you know, burn a little extra fat and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we, I use PVC pipes when I'm first starting out with students. Um, we'll use, uh, wooden dowels, um, all sorts of different things that just to get stuff into their hands and help them move the weight and help them feel good to feel good about themselves. Um, this other video over here, this is Anna. Um, Anna, uh, was a student with, uh, autism. She loves counting. So if I just started counting, she was going to start doing exercises. So as long as I was counting, she was doing exercises. Now, again, I always tell people, Hey, look. Her curls might not necessarily look like your curls, but she's moving her body. She's moving her weight, the weight, and she's exercising. Um, so that's my weight room is not going to look like everybody else's weight room. My seventh period class, it might look like other people's weight room. It's still going to be a little bit different. And what I want to tell and, and, and tell other adapted PE teachers, because I've given this presentation before and some feedback that I've gotten is, is Josh is awesome and he does some really good stuff. I don't know if I can do that. I understand that. But listen, 
I didn't start off with special Olympic powerlifters that were world champs. I started off with some kids. We just went in the weight room and laid down and did bench press and we did some curls. It, it doesn't have to look like mine. All it has to be is you getting in there and having some fun with your kids and also being safe. I mean, safety is always the first, the, the top priority, but you getting in there and having fun with your kids and bench pressing, curling, um, doing some lat pull downs, other things is just get in there and, and move weights, have them lift weights. They know that their parents go to the gym. They know that their brothers and sisters and that other typical um, students also go into the weight room. They want to be like that. That's what they want to experience. They want to experience that kind of, you know, typicalness um, and getting them into the weight room. They know that they know lifting weights. And then, as I like to say, and I think I've, I've stolen this from someone, whether you lift 10 pounds, a hundred pounds or a thousand pounds, that sense of accomplishment that you have from doing that is huge. And that's what every, I want to all my, all my students to experience that. All right. Um, so the three main lifts that we do are going to be squat, bench press and deadlift. Um, and they, uh, <clears throat> I have a progression of how I teach these. Um, and I'm, I train kids for up to a year before I even consider trying to put them on my powerlifting team just so that they learn how to move their bodies, how to control their bodies during the lifts, um, and and how to make sure that I have them safe every day. So we're going to start with zombie squats, just air squats where your arms are straight out. Uh, most of the time, I'm going to have them squat to a box. So they start learning the proper depth that they need. I have different boxes at different heights that I use. Um, I didn't start off with those. I usually just started off with squatting to the bench press. Um, squatting to a bench or just found a chair. Um, so again, I just adapted every, whatever I've had since I've gotten into it, I've started to buy stuff that I need. But um, at the beginning, I just squatted to the bench or squatted to a chair. Uh, we're going to move on after I, I think they're doing pretty good. We'll move on to goblet squats where they're holding the kettlebell in front of them or a dumbbell right in front of them. I'm um, trying to keep the chest up. Okay. Goblet squats are a great job. Do a great job of forcing the student to try to keep their chest up because the goblet squat is going to pull them, pull them forward. And they've got to learn that they've got to sit up with that chest up. Um, then, you know, after a certain amount of time, I feel that it's safe that we'll move to a, some kind of back squat. But again, this will be with either the safety bar, which is a, a, a training bar. I mean, or a, or a PVC pipe or a wooden dowel. And then they're going to learn how to back squat. Uh, this is a Miri, um, and I'm going to show you this video of a Miri, and then on the next slide, you're going to see another uh, video of a Miri and his best buddy, Dave. But this was a Miri learning how to back squat, and this is uh, uh, this is from 2122 because he's got a mask on. Um, but if you'll look, he kind of moves all over the place as he's learning how to squat. He doesn't have uh, great body control, um, but this is, what, this is what it looks like every day um, at the beginning. Just keep that chest up. Good. Chest up, chest up. Squeeze that bar. Give me one more. Hey. All right. So you saw how his body was kind of tilting forward. Um, he's he's learning how to squat. He's learning the body control that he needs in his core, um, in order to bring all the air into there to keep it still, all right? I have a whole bunch of cues that I use with them. You heard me say chest up, chest up, chin level. You don't want to be looking straight up in the air. You don't want to be looking down. It's just keeping that chin nice and level, looking straight ahead. You want to push the hips back to start the movement, okay? So that hip hinge sitting back to a box, all right? Push the knees out throughout the whole lift and make sure you lock your knees at the top. Those are my squat progressions. That's how I start with everybody. Every kid that I have coached has gone through this. They're going to go zombie squats, goblet squats, start learning how to back squat, and then back squat from the rack with these cues. Now, this next video is going to be a deadlift video, but it's of Amiri. But I want you to see the progress that Amiri's made from that first video where he's learning how to squat to we went to Ireland for the AWPC World Championships this past August, and he deadlifted 242 pounds. So he went from 
what you see right there to having the body control and the strength to deadlift 242 pounds. So here he is. And then the best part is seeing the excitement. You saw that same excitement from Adrian when he hit his lift. You see it from Amiri, the sense of accomplishment for them. This is my other kind of super stud, Dave. This is him hitting a, a 300 pound deadlift. All right, so also there are their uh, their Instagram handles. They love getting new followers, so I always put that on there for them. Um, they love people to, to to watch them do all their lifting and like all their photos. So that's Amiri Abraham and Dave uh, Dave Shama. Uh, if you want to follow them, I just I put that on there. But that's the progress that Amiri made in three years. Um, he went from that, those back squats. I know that was, he also back squatted at that competition, like 160 pounds, I believe. It's like one, I know it was like 150. So, and you saw the body control that he had with his deadlift. You saw how he kept his, his core tight throughout the whole thing. And that's just repetition, repetition, repetition with those cues that I go over with them. Uh, the, the next technique that we always use Squat, bench press, and deadlift are going to hit all your major muscle groups. So those are the why, those are the lifts that I focus on to make sure we are hitting a lot of different muscles for each one of the kids. Um, so the bench press, it's grips the thumb distance apart. Um, I'm going to start all the kids with either some kind of broomstick or, you know, wooden dowel or a PVC pipe. We'll move on to the power bar and then bar with weights as they, as they get older or get better at it all right you bring the bar down to right at the nipple line push the bar straight up and out lots of people know how to bench press it's it's pretty simple um and it's a good movement for getting your pectorials your shoulders your lats um everything's move used in the bench press um our next one is the deadlift progression okay um again i'm going to start with kettlebells the kids are going to learn how to to deadlift by just picking up kettlebells from the ground. Um, we're going to keep our chest up, our head up, pull the bar in and up, arms straight, bars at the knees, squeeze the butt cheeks together. Um, and uh, that's how we do the deadlift. The, the big thing with the deadlift is making sure they're not really rounding their back. It's trying to make sure that they're keeping that chin level, just like they do in the squat, keep everything head up. Um, and I'll start with kettlebells in the front where they're just grabbing the kettlebell and learning to stand up. And again, it's that hip hinge movement on the way back down. All right. Um, we'll watch just a little bit of this video. This is Micah learning how to. He was only supposed to do one there, but he kept going. So we were like, all right, just keep going. All right, but that was Micah. Um, the other thing that I've instituted in the last couple of years is banded pull-ups. And I'm going to take a second to brag about uh, my kids. I'm pretty sure I'm probably one of the only adapted PE teachers that has five kids that can do unassisted pull-ups. Um, I got uh, a Dave can do unassisted pull-ups and he just reps them out. Uh, George is doing unassisted pull-ups. Um, I've got... Uh, two other kids that uh, that can do unassisted pull-ups and I'm very very proud of that fact and it all started from our banded pull-ups um and uh this is where I just put a, a a band big thick band on the power rack um I I kind of can adjust the height depending on how it is I use steps so that they can help access to the band they grab on um and I'm right there spotting them so I'm right there. I have had great success with this. Um, what I do for my students in wheelchairs is we're going to use the uh, the small mini bands and we're going to get the kind of the same movement out of it. Um, here's Micah again doing these banded pull-ups. 
I believe it was his birthday that day, so he did 18. All right, and then here is my my uh, my adaptation for my students that are in wheelchairs or don't want to get up onto the the apparatus that we use. Three, that's it. Again, four. Again, let it come all the way down and pull it. Yes, again, let it all the way down. Oh. Again, I love Adrian. He's one of my favorite students because he just works so hard and he loves every bit of it. So uh, I know I don't have a ton of time, so I want to kind of get through some of this, but uh, that's the banded pull-ups. Uh, my kids with autism really seem to love the up and down movement when they get on the band too. I get them running up there. <laughs> I got to be careful with some of them that I, when I turn my back, they run up there real quick and I'm like, whoa, slow down. But um, so... Uh, that's my banded pull-ups. All right, how I set up my stations when I do my adapted PE class. This is my seventh period class. Um, so uh, this is kind of my, what I consider my advanced class. The main lift, the main lift is going to be me. It's going to be the squat, bench, or deadlift. In this picture, it's me working on uh, uh, dumbbell bench press. Okay, they're going to work with me on dumbbell bench press. And then they're going to go right next door, right next to me, and they're going to do their auxiliary lifts. This is where I train up my paraprofessionals. It takes me a few weeks to get them comfortable and okay with it, but they're usually okay with it because they're not doing free weights. They're just doing, you know, some lat pull downs. As you can see there in that picture, they're uh, they're doing some uh, tricep press down uh, press downs. Dave's doing some face pulls right there. Um, so, and I'm also standing right there if, if need be, but really um, by this time in the year, we're kind of rolling through and uh, the paras are, uh, I have some really exceptional para pros that help me um, and do a great job of making sure they're doing the correct form and counting out the numbers that they need to count. We have a third station kind of towards the back. That's going to be our cardio station for the day. Um, I'm going to either have another pair if I have one, or if I got a really good peer mentor right there, Maggie's an excellent peer mentor. She's been doing a great job this year. And so I kind of put her in charge of that. The kids love her. Um, and she does a really good job of cheering, cheering them on, counting, the, uh, counting their numbers and helping them out. Um, so in that station, we'll do, uh, slam, uh, slam balls, uh, various weights, and all my kids do slam balls. A train does slam balls in in his chair. He we're working on him pushing them off the chair, uh, using both hands to do that. And my peer mentor in that class is catching them before they hit his feet or catching them before they you know get to the ground. Um, but everyone kind of we all all my classes follow this kind of same rotation, whether it's this big in the weight room or we have our circuits outside the weight room where we're doing weight training. Um, it does take me a few weeks to train if I get new peer mentor, uh, well, new peer mentors and new paras. Sometimes I get, you know, most of my paras I have right now have been with me for a couple of years and, and know kind of my expectations and, um, and do a great job. Um, this is a new slide I put in because it was a question I got to ask when I was training up some special Olympic powerlifting coaches. And so I just wanted people to see how my classroom works. Um, if you see uh, Pralad in my picture, He's over there. He's doing just some box squats. Um, and that's just a warm up. Just we're going to get the legs kind of warmed up. So he's over there. That means Parlod's coming to me next. So he'll be on the bench press after George here. And then, as you see from this picture, I was probably working with Parlod and George is on the tricep pushdowns. So that's kind of how we work. Try to keep everyone busy and occupied. Um, and then also give them a little bit of rest and recovery in between sets and reps. Uh, this kind of workout, we're going to do one warm up set and then we try to get four, uh, four sets in um, before the end of our class period. Um, so that's kind of how I set that up. Um, Josh, maybe another minute or two. So we have time yep. for Kristen and questions. Thanks. No problem. Um, as far as how I train my kids, 
uh, that I train for my big dog. Uh, we do competition prep. Uh, we also, when we're not in competition prep, we use the conjugate method and we try different things. We use uh, accommodating resistance with bands and chains. We use that in the weight room at school in the weight room that we go to for our powerlifting training. Um, this is the accommodating resistance that we use with the bands. All four of these kids are uh, on my powerlifting team and are still current members of the powerlifting team. Um, and as you can see, I'm doing something different with Harper because Harper couldn't handle the bands at that time. That's an older picture. But again, one as I'm kind of wrapping up my time here, I like for you to see all the smiling faces right here. Okay. And all we're doing that day is it was like a Friday. And I was like, you know what? It's Friday. We're going to go and do some curls. All right. And we did curls and the kids had a great time because who doesn't love to go in and get curls and try to pump up their, their biceps. All right. Um, I have a little bit of a unified powerlifting team that I work with. Uh, and the kids love that. They all think Lindsay's their girlfriend, by the way. Uh, and then this is my, this is my powerlifting team, big dog barbell. Um, uh, this was us in Louisiana for the world championships last year. And that's kind of our wrapping up right there. But so I really appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to everybody and, and talk about what I do and how, why I think it's so important that we get kids with intellectual disability strength training and get them in the weight room. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'll be more than happy to answer questions when it's the question and answer time, or if you want to reach out to me, shoot me an email or DM me, whatever you'd like to do. So thank you guys. Excellent. Thank you so much, Josh. That was great. Uh, no next, we're going to pass the baton over to Kristen, who's going to talk about sharing. Adapt Fit. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for being here and for listening in. I'm happy to share um, a program that kind of got started um, when I was in college, actually. Um, let me get the presentation going. Oh no. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So um, let me go ahead and get started. Um, so thanks again, everyone. Um, I'm part of a program called Adapt Fit. I am currently the director for it. Um, and I'll kind of go into the history of it some more. Um, this is kind of what I'm going to touch base on today. Um, our mission, um, our story, as I kind of got started on, um, our team, who we are, uh, the classes that we offer right now, um, and I'll go into more detail of our schedule, um, how we're inclusive and how we're a part of our community, and all the fun that we have, and of course, into any questions. Um, so who we are, we are a unique nonprofit, uh, officially. Uh, that's the first time I've actually made it publicly known. Um, it's it's very, very new for us. Yeah, so we're super excited. Um, that's our latest news. Um, we're going to be announcing it at our, um, with the families at our Halloween party this Friday. So um, we are a fitness program um, specifically adapted for uh, kids, teens, and adults with um, special needs. Um, but we do like to share that we are inclusive and we welcome anyone that's interested in joining our gym to please come and join our gym. Um, we also have a sister gym um, and also the co-owner of that gym is an owner of Adapt Fit. Um, so it's another great um, chance to be inclusive where we have families that uh, work out next door at the same time as their son or daughter is working out um, with me, potentially, um, or one of our coaches. Um, of course, I know, um, Josh, you did a great job kind of presenting some things that I would be uh, mentioning as well, um, that we're just tackling the health problems that, you know, can happen, especially we've gotten reached out to families um, over, over COVID, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our families, you know, 
had to be at home. Um, a lot of the lifestyle changed, right? Um, I've I've heard from families, you know, their son or daughter is comfortable now, right, being at home, and so they're all they're trying to get out again. And um, we're it's it's awesome because we have a lot of families reaching out now, and and their son or daughter wants to get back out there. So it's all it's all great things. Um, and of course, movement is so important. Um, keeps us happy. I try to share with all of our clients, all of our friends, like, why are we working out today? You know, um, for a lot of them, a lot of our family members uh, even mention like, oh my gosh, they're sleeping so much better. That alone, you know, is a game changer for, for every day. Um, so in 2011, an amazing adapted PE teacher um, started a Long Beach Parks and Rec um, program. And it was called multi-sport and fitness. Um, she was pregnant at the time and I was in college at Long Beach State. Um, and she said, you know, I'm going to start this because a lot of my families, she was a teacher in Long Beach, um, need something for their, for the older students, right? Because there's a lot of programs or more options out there when students with special needs you know, out in the community, there's just more options. And so the older they were getting, there was less options out there and she really wanted something for them. Um, and so I was happy to jump on that. It sounded amazing. I said, yeah, let's do it. So it was very similar to an adapted PE class, um, a traditional class, you could say with locomotor skills, object control skills, and then we would do um, fitness. Um, and then, so then we became Adaptive Sweat in uh, 2017. I um, became friends. I was working out at our sister gym, Substance Fitness, and they were adding on a space. And I thought, oh, this is an amazing spot. I would love to move my Parks and Rec program over to you because they had the equipment that would be so helpful and teach all of my members, you know, how to use uh, equipment safely and successfully. I know some of my clients would go to the gym by themselves and families would mention to me, I don't know really what they're doing at the gym. You know, I don't know how they're using the weights. They just want to be independent. So it was a great option for us to go into, um, into an actual gym. In 2018, that's kind of when, um, adapt fit came into place. Um, so, when a gym owner, trainer, and also um, Coach Susie, uh, she has um, a son with autism and, you know, it came near and dear to her heart. And she said, we need to, we need to expand this if you want. And I said, okay, let's, let's do it. <laughs> um, and so in 2023, now we are um, also offering adapted physical education services um, in person at our location and virtual, which has become a great option for adapted PE teachers that are full time but are interested in continuing teaching after school hours. Um, we have been able to do that, which is great. Um, and in 2024, um, we are now um, community partners also with schools, so um, families can pick and choose to come to our gym uh, for fitness classes uh, and camps as well, which I'll go into. And we are, like I mentioned, um, now a nonprofit. Um, our team um, includes myself, <laughs> and we do have another um, credentialed adapted physical education teachers that are teaching the classes, teaching adapted PE. Um, we have our certified personal trainers. We also have experienced behavioral specialists. And honestly, we can't do it without our amazing volunteers, the people that are helping us. And um, we do get um, a lot of high school volunteers, which is awesome. We also have had um, APE uh, students studying adapted PE, um, specifically from Long Beach State. And um, yeah, so we're, we're, we can't do it without them. We also have uh, substance uh, members that work out and train next door are also part of our community and our gym, which is so fun. Um, and this is my friend, Kyson. Um, and this is an older video. All the videos on here are a little bit older, but um, he talks about the program and why he loves it. All right, Kyson, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Awesome. Wanted to ask you a question, okay? Mm -hmm. What do you like about Adapt Fit? Adapt Fit is a wonderful place to come out, do lots of exercise, 
to be fit and strong. And that that fits awesome. Hanging out with people, friends, Coach Suji, Coach Raul, Coach Mesa, Coach Christian, Coach Amber, and everyone there. It's awesome. You're awesome. Well, thanks. <laughs> okay. Tell me what your favorite class is at Adaptive. My favorite class in Adaptive is my favorite ultimate one, Power and Spin. Oh, Powell. two and classes. Powell. Power, okay. Power, Spin, and Core. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a lot of classes. How many classes do you come to a week? So let me think. Let me think. I think six. Yeah, I think you do. Mm -hmm. You do. You come to six classes a week. That's yes, awesome. I do. What would you tell your friends about Adapt Fit? Okay, so I tell my, my best friend Ryan to come and join us at Adapt Fit. She's my best friend. I know her since Phoenix, I think, school here. Yeah. And all the kids out there <laughs> come and join us in a dad fit to help to help us to stay fit and strong and be with us. I agree. Perfect. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Kaysen. You're welcome. Oops. <laughs> And really that, you know, that's what it's all about, building friendships, you know, inviting other friends to come, having fun. And we talk about we have our class rules, right? And I always tell them the number one rule is have fun. So I, I he really is a great example of, you know, why we do what we do. It's just building friendships and having fun with your friends. And why not move <laughs> while you're having fun? Um, so here's just some um, examples. Here are the classes that we offer right now. Um, we have our core class. Of course, it is for focusing on our core and our lower back. Um, we're not just laying on the mat the whole time um, to do traditional type core exercises. We do challenge them um, in other ways and doing standing exercises as well. Um, we have our high intensity interval training classes. Um, of course, those are our faster paced classes. We also have balance classes, um, of course, working on that balance and coordination, for example, like single leg exercises or a split squat or lunges where they are challenging their balance a little bit. Um, but I also want to say a lot of our exercises are included in the other classes as well, um, but we just try and focus on that specific type of skill. Uh, we have our power class. Um, I know Kyson mentioned this one while flexing. Uh, that is our strength training class. Um, right now, we're not doing anything with super heavy weights, but I the goal of this class is really just teaching them the safety of how to use the weight safely and successfully. Uh, what I do is we do a warm up round, right? Either no weights or light weights. And then during the class, I'll stop and say, okay, we're going into round two. How are you feeling right now? That weight looked kind of easy for you. I think you could go up. What do you think? So I like to talk to them about it because I really want to end up make it individualized, of course, for them. I want them to feel good about themselves. I want them to feel accomplished. Um, and then we have, which is definitely one of our um, most popular classes right now, is our spin class. We offer this one um, three times a week. Um, and it, it's just a lot of fun. They do a lot of exercises um, seated on the bike, um, like push-ups. Uh, we also do light weights most of the time, not all the time, depending on the coach, of course, and your and your lesson for that day. Um, but we will provide um, light weights while seated on the bike. Um, it's another great way to have to do multiple things at the same time, right? Sometimes we try and challenge them to spin the bike while you're doing push-ups, right? So doing multiple things with your body. I've seen some great success with some of our members um, at the beginning you know, they, they would maybe only do one part, right? Either just keep riding the bike or they would stop and just do the upper body. So it's great to see the, the improvements of them being able to start doing both. It's, it's really cool. And our uh, Wednesdays right now, we do offer a yoga class right now. Uh, we kind of like to have that as, um, 
kind of in the middle of the week, you know, to kind of slow down and meditate and relax. Um, it's definitely another really popular class of ours. And a lot of these classes are designed um, so our members can stay for two classes at a time. Um, so it's not the same class back to back. We want to offer them, you know, the chance to stay if they want to. Um, it also gives a lot of our families um, a chance to do something that they need to do or want to do, whether it is to go work out, whether, whether it is to go run errands, right? That offers them um, two hours of, of time. And this is our schedule of classes. Um, they are all 50 minutes long. Um, and the first class is free. Uh, we just ask that you contact us and that we go through a consultation first. Um, again, it's very individualized. We really like to get to know our clients, you know, what their needs are, any health concerns, any, any th behaviors that we need to know of, because we want everyone to be happy, safe, and successful. Uh, we do have uh, an inclusive setting. Uh, like I'm already mentioned, our sister gym, Substance Fitness. Uh, we also have uh, Adapt Friends. Uh, we get to partner up uh, like boot camp style and you work out where everyone is included. And uh, we have um, several times been part of the Autism Speaks Walk. So we are uh, very proud of that. Um, and we do love doing, doing things for the community. And some tips for inclusive fitness, um, just building relationships with the clients, their families, um, and the staff. Uh, right now we are in, for example, um, our spirit Halloween spirit week to get excited for our Friday party. So kind of bringing in with the social media and our families and friends and then getting them to come in. So it's just not about the workout, even though that's an important piece, but also just building again, those friendships and just having fun and wanting to come, wanting to move, um, not being forced to. Um, we, like I already mentioned, more than just a gym, uh, our classes are designed to stay a while. We really, really love our high school volunteers, uh, Long Beach State volunteers and our uh, sust substance fitness clients. Uh, also, um, just being creative to make it inclusive, right? We need to modify and adapt these lessons to meet the needs of all abilities. Um, we use a variety of teaching strategies um, to support and understanding, right? We use visuals, verbal prompts, physical prompts, modeled cues, um, and close proximity. Um, you know, in our classes, the, the coach isn't necessarily always in the front, right? We're, we're always moving and helping. Um, even though we have volunteers in the class also moving, we're, we're a team and we're all working with everybody. Um, and really for to be inclusive, you, you have to get to know your clients. You, we do personalized workouts. Um, I already mentioned the consultations, um, really sitting down with the families and getting to really getting to know them and even anything that's motivating for them as well. Um, another thing we also do is offer the frequent water breaks. Um, that's really important um, for our 50 minute classes. Um, some of our clients, you know, they go in so hard, so fast. So it's really important to kind of teach them like, let's slow down a little bit, let's rest, and then we're going to get back into it. Um, here is a video of uh, Roberta and her son, Tommy. And I know um, time is kind of tight, so I might play a little bit and then and then go ahead and move to the next one. All right, very cool. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Tommy. Thanks for joining us today. Just wanted to ask you guys a few questions and hopefully you can share some information with all the regional center families who might be interested in Adaptit. So... Yeah. How long has Tommy been coming to Adapted? He's been coming since they originally opened, and that was like four and a half years ago. He's an OG. He is an OG for sure. Um, so what would you say the impact Adapted has had for Tommy or for your family? I would say that um, it's been priceless, right? Whoa. You love coming. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> We're keeping you from your class. Yes. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, I would definitely say that this is something that has been very good for our family, especially Tommy. Tommy. Um, he definitely is more confident in things he does. He definitely sleeps better at night since he's been coming. We see great gains with his attention. And he loves the friends he makes here. Yes. Yes. And so it's a family. So uh, I would say the impact has been priceless for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I agree. We love the social aspect of it too. Yeah. So what would you say, Roberta, to parents who think that a gym is either not important for their child or that any typical gym would be just as fine for their kid with special needs? Well, I would definitely say that um, a gym is not a gym uh for our kids we need a place to be able to go that our kids are loved and supported and to be able to be able to look at the child and their needs and adapt fit gives that gives what a child needs or a young man or a young lady needs along the way if they need a little extra push or a correction in the way that they're doing an exercise or something that they're participating in we know the staff at Adapt Fit will do that for them. A regular gym doesn't offer anything like that. So we look at the staff that is here as part of our family. And we know that with Tommy coming here, he will get all the love and support he needs. Right? <laughs> So I just want to share a little something about Tommy. He has um, lost over a hundred pounds. Um, so he he started that journey years ago. Um, I, I met Tommy back in 2012. Um, so he started it, this process years ago and to see his progress and that we could just be part of that journey for him is, is really cool. Um, his goal was to go to um, Disney World. And so he worked out and worked out um, to be able to, to get that as a gift. Um, so he, that was the first motivator for him. And now it just became a lifestyle, you know? So we're really proud of him. Um, we also offer um, some fun social events. Uh, so I mentioned already, we have our Halloween party coming up. Uh, we like to offer these like every other month or so on a Friday. Um, and so we offer movie nights, game nights, um, karaoke nights has definitely become a favorite. Um, and then, of course, we have our dances. And then at those events, um, we always do. Um, we always provide food, treats and um, crafts. So we have a lot of fun. <laughs> and we also offer um, camps. Uh, typically, we do a, a winter camp. And then we do one or two summer camps. And um, included in that, we like to offer a workout. We include um, some fine motor work as well with our crafts. Uh, we also do nutrition time. They get to be creative with their with their snack before they eat it. Sometimes I they they just want to eat it, of course, but <laughs> we try, we try to slow them down to, to work on some fine motor as well. Um, and then of course we also include. Uh, physical education type of social games as well. And I have one more video.
And that is it on my presentation. All right. Thank you so, Thank much, you so much, Kristen. Uh, yes. If you have um, an email, maybe put that yes. in the chat, share Absolutely. it with anyone who wants to reach out, to contact you. Uh, and at this time, we will open it up for questions for Josh or Kristen. John, I think you had a question in the chat. <laughs> no, no, number one, I want to say great presentations by both folks. Uh, you know, wonderful to see. I mean, and Kristen, in your case, the growth from where you started and the time progression you covered to where you are, are now and how that's evolved and how that's matured has been awesome. You know, Josh is a, is a power lifter. I can't help but look at what you've done and just, you know, say, you know, fantastic. You know, not to mention the fact that also you're affiliated, it looks like with uh, APF, you know, WPC and <laughs> some of that too. Oh, yeah. And, uh, um, and, and, and definitely though, uh, I mean, congrats to both of you, Josh, I'd be interested in keeping in touch with you and, and sure. I'm even curious if you might be, uh, uh, up at w WPC worlds this, uh, uh, next month. Uh, I am not, we, we okay. thought about it. Um, I'm finishing up my EDS this, uh, semester and I am, I'm just worn out. Um, <laughs> okay. and, uh, we, cause we went to Ireland in for the AWPC and, uh, we thought about it, but it just the time crunch right now is uh, so. Yeah, I would like, hey, Josh, if you could put your, uh, I didn't get on your slides, the uh, email yeah. address for you. Yeah, I'll do that. You put that in the chat. That'd be great. And I'll, I'll touch base with you. But I mean, awesome. I, I enjoyed it today. Both of you. I mean, that was, that was fantastic. Yeah. This was fun. Thank you. And the APF does a, a fantastic job with including, uh, uh, people, they call it their special Olympics division, but including people with intellectual disabilities and they're just, they're phenomenal. Um, and it's, it's really, really cool. So, I think, I think that's on their first day of WPC worlds, which are up in the Chicago. Yeah, th there's a, there's a team from, uh, Louisiana that, uh, there, there's a gym called we train unique, which is uh, very similar to Kristen's that, uh, that does, uh, they have a powerlifting class for their gym and they're, they're going, uh, up there. Cause you know, it was my gym, my big dog barbell is also a, we're also a nonprofit. Um, and I raised a bunch of money to, to help get my kids over to Ireland. Um, and, uh, and so that you train unique, you know, that it was expensive to get over to Ireland. Um, but they're, so they're taking their kids up there and that's why I would like to have gone up to compete with them, but. Okay. Josh, we train you, oh, sorry. Josh, you have a question on Facebook in the chat, and that is from Katie. She's asking, how many students are you working with at a time in the weight room? Uh, those Both those classes have nine students in them. Um, so my fifth and seventh period have nine students. I have 32 total students, so my other two classes are six. Um, so if that math is right. I don't math well sometimes, but... <laughs> Kristen, I have a, a question for you. I know you collaborate with the local Long Beach Unified Transition Program. Could you talk a little bit more about that, how you got that started? Yes, actually, it was um, a teacher that reached out to us to see if there was any way we could collaborate and work with them. Um, we would love to have them back since COVID, you know, kind of changed things up a little bit. We would love to get back with them. Um, but we also have worked with um, Los Alamitos transition program as well. Um, so they were, um, they were driven to our location and they would do um, a different workout each week they would come. So they would come for an hour um, once a week. Nice. And also, do you um, work to accept like regional center funding? Yes. So we do have families that are connected with regional center um, and each family is getting funded differently. We are not a vendor currently with um, regional center, um, but we are on their vendors list, if that makes sense. So um, there are families that are able and are getting um, funding for adapted for adapted. Yeah. Great. Um, I see emails in the chat, which is great. So I'll just say them verbally in case um, those don't have access to the Zoom chat. But Kristen's email is info at adaptfitlife.com. And Josh, do you have a preferred one? Uh, either one. Um, it doesn't matter. 
Okay. You can do the you can do the schools one. That's fine. So Porter J two at Fulton. Oh, Fulton with one L schools.org. Do we have any other questions for Josh or Kristen? Kristen, I would love to pick your brain at one point because I, I think uh I want to take Big Dog to kind of what you're doing as well. Um yeah, definitely. Um I, I love that. it. Connect. Connections made. <laughs> and really it's <laughs> I didn't do it alone. You know, I, I have a awesome partners, um, that, you know, it was like, we were each a piece, you know, right. to, to making this. Um, but yes, I'm more than happy to, to talk to you. Yeah. We, on Tuesdays, uh, I take about four kids from school with me and we go over to our, the gym that I train at and also trains the kids and he, the gym owner lets them train for free. Um, so I have a, I have a, my powerlifting class with them from like three forty five to five thirty, and then I have a second group that's now come in um, from five thirty to six thirty, um, and uh, you know this, that's kind of what I love and what I really eventually want to do, kind of like what you're doing with your your gym classes and stuff. So, well, and I mean, you know, we both it's just starting and doing it. Too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But but hey, Josh and Kristen, I mean, the question that Josh just asked. I mean, I think that's valuable, Kristen, because, you know, I mean, for me, I've been an athlete most of my life. I'm later in life now. I'm getting my Ph.D., you know, and, you know, doing something like what Josh is doing or what you're doing is kind of what I want to do next. And so, I mean, bringing together some critical mass, maybe more people than are just here right now, of expertise in terms of how you do this and make it a successful venture, both for, you know, your clientele and the enough of the business side to keep it afloat right you know so that it doesn't doesn't go belly up um i think it'd be i mean that may even be uh you know next year at uh you know at the conference when we meet for the ncp id conference that might be a nice little workshop or something you know just just thinking about it how, how do you make this happen how do you make the, the the dream the thought the hope the reality you know and, and maybe pull in some others that have done some things well, you know, because I'm sure you've got plenty of stories along the way of what's worked and what's failed and, and, and how you've stepped through that. Love that. Um, Josh and Kristen, if you could send me your Google slide PowerPoints and we'll put them on the NickPed website as well for those okay. who would like access. Thank you both again. It was fantastic. Much appreciated. Do you all share in your expertise on adapted fitness? Um, in November, we're looking to do our next APE collaborative on um, student teaching, APE student teaching and uh, mentors and so and, and teacher mentors. So that's what's coming. We'll announce soon the day and time, but that's what we have in store for next month. So thanks all. Till next time. Thank you. all Thank you.